I've done a presentation before on the turbine network, so in the previous one I showed how to set up the turbine with the charts and everything. In this one I'm not going to go through that again, I'm uh, just going to show you what I did after that with adding the uh, steam <coughs> and gland steam onto the turbines. Okay, in this presentation I'm, I'm just going to quickly go through the mass balance, uh, the complete turbine train, and then how I modeled the HP turbine, the IP turbine and the LP turbine. Uh, how I designed the gland steam seals, the blade steam, and then connecting all the turbines together. For this presentation, I highlighted the um, part that's applicable in the um, energy and mass balance here. As you can see there, the thick red lines are the main steam and the blade steam lines, and then the green, uh, pink, and orange are the um, gland steam lines. Just continue. Okay, this is the um, complete train of the Madupi um, center line. Uh, there's a single HP turbine with reed to a double flow IP turbine and two double flow LP turbines. There's blade steam from the HP turbine exhaust, asymmetric IP and symmetric LP bleeds. And I've modeled each stage between the bleeds um, as a separate turbine because there's different, there's different um, steam flow rates going through each section of the turbine. So in total, there's 17 turbines that are connected to one single shaft. This is just the uh, mass flow through each turbine that I used to cut to um, set up the turbine charts. This is taken from the Eaton uh, mass flow calculations. So I'm not sure if you can see exactly there, but I worked out here the mass flow that's going to go through each section of the turbine and I used these values to set up my uh, turbine charts. Turbine charts will be in the next slide. So using the correct mass flow, it is possible to create a turbine chart for each turbine. Like I said in the previous presentation, I showed how I created the turbine charts. So I didn't include it here again. So but yeah, yes. I, maybe, I, I wasn't here, so I just wanted to know, is it a generic type of? Yes. Um, it's a generic it's type. Rulf gave me an Excel spreadsheet that I could use to get it. So mm -hmm. I just um, insert the values for the specific turbine and then I get a chart that I can export and import into okay. Linux. Right. Okay, this is a cross section of the HP turbine. As you can see there on the right hand side, number seven, the inlet scroll. And then by the, by the balance piston, there's some um, seals that's <coughs> leakage on the HP side, and on each side of the turbine you can see there's uh, three channels uh, for the gland steam. Uh, the next slide will show you exactly how I'm <coughs> I just want to explain the, the um, pressure shaft seal. The shaft seals are provided with three outlet chambers in order to prevent um, steam leakage. The inner chamber is connected with the pressure relief system and discharges a big part of the leakage steam into the feed water. The middle chamber is maintained at a slight overpressure by the gland seam system and the outer chamber is at slight vacuum. Steam together with um, penetrated air is discharged into the gland steam condenser. In my modeling of the glands, I didn't include the air that's going to come into the steam uh, because I can't, I'm not sure if you can even do it in flow next to uh, combine the air and the steam. You can. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't include that. So but it's probably very yeah, 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 small. I'd rather not do that in flow next if, you, if it's not a major contributor, otherwise um, it's yeah. much more difficult to solve. So this is the uh, flow next model of the HP turbine. As you can see there, in the middle the small thing is the turbine, yes. And on the right hand side you will see the this leakage over the balance piston and the three chambers there for the uh, glands. They like I said, there should be another one with air leaking in from each side, but I didn't include that. In the inner chamber where the uh, excess steam will go into the feed water heating, the middle chamber providing pressurized steam, and the outer chamber that's going to be under vacuum. For the IP turbine, uh, the gland seal is almost the same except for the innermost chamber. The intermediate pressure of gland seals are provided with two outlet chambers, the inner to prevent steam leakage, in order to prevent steam leakage, sorry. The inner chamber is maintained at a slight overpressure by the gland steam system and the outer chamber has a slight vacuum. The steam together with penetrated air is discharged into the gland steam condenser. I just included the 
overview there of the IP turbine. It's, and you can see there the two steam bleeds in the middle of the turbine uh, that's also included there. So that's the reason why I had to split this one up in four separate turbines. And there you can see the four separate turbines with the from in the middle you can see from reed the steam coming in from the reed going through the first two turbines and then down there there's two orifices where the HP steam bleeds are and then going back to the second stage of the turbine and then coming out to the next steam bleed and then from there it will go to the crossovers over to the LP turbines with two labyrinth seals there for the inner and outer chamber of the gland seals. And then the same for the LP turbine again, the shaft seals is intended to seal up the exhaust area but in this case it's under vacuum so here you want to prevent air from going inside the turbine where on the other turbines you prevent the steam from going out into the turbine hole. The shaft seal casing is provided with two steam belts, one for connection to the gland steam system and the other exhaust system. The gland steam system operates with a slight overpressure and the exhaust system with a slight vacuum. The gland steam and the air drawn are fed into the gland steam condenser. And there's just a cross section of the LP turbine. So here's the two LP turbines. I, you'll see because of the four bleeding points, I had to make more sections of this turbine. So for each turbine, I've got eight uh, sections or six sections for a, of a separate um, turbine and also the two chambers for the gland steam seals. Okay, to model the bleed steam, um, I had the, the set mass flow on a steady state for this model, so I wanted to size the orifice so that I can get that set mass flow from the turbine. Because this is an interconnected work network, um, changing orifice size on one of the bleed steam lines it influences the upstream and the downstream mass flow. So when I get the first one, say HP6 and HP5 right, and I go to the gear at the tank, then when I get that one right, the HP6 and HP5 is wrong again. So first I try to um, design it in the Flonix designer to design the orifice size to get the correct mass flow. I think there's like 12 interconnected uh, variables that I need to design, and on my computer it didn't work at all crashed every time, so I'm not sure if it's possible to try it like that, but uh, so to get it done a bit easier and faster, I used PID controllers to size the orifice to get the correct mass flow, and then I ran it with the steady state parameters in transient until it stabilized, and then I just deactivated the PID controllers to keep the size of the orifice, and that worked quite nicely. Then for the gland steam mass flow design, the, once again the gland steam mass flow is known for the steady state. I use labyrinth seals with the actual number of teeth and shaft diameters to model the labyrinth seals. And then I just use the Flonix designer to design the tooth clearance to get the correct uh, mass flow. Uh, then at the end of, the, of it all, I needed to connect all the 17 separate turbines together. So I just connected them all to one shaft, and I specified the shaft speed to be at 3,000 RPM, and then Flonix calculate the excess power on the shaft that will go to the generator for generating power. Yeah. That's basically it. It's possible, I just, in conclusion here, yeah, it's possible to model a very detailed system, and it's up to the modeler to decide how much detail he wants in the system. Uh, for me, it's a great visual representation of the flow paths of the steam of the turbine, uh, normally in the PNIDs you don't get that detail of exactly where all the quantities of steam will go. And then in red I just say that although the next release of Flonix will probably reduce all of this effort into a single component, this was, for me it was very helpful and a worthwhile exercise. <laughs>